let's bring Art Roderick in on this. Now, Art, as you probably know, is a retired U.S. Marshal himself. He's also a former uh, senior manager at the Department of Homeland Security. But uh, we were thinking of you right away. We heard the Marshal Service was involved in this. Um, you know, a couple of things strike me from Evan's reporting. Number one, he was describing serving this warrant as a routine task, and it just uh, shows you that nothing's routine in the business that uh, that you were in. But what about that last point he was making, that because this suspect did not have necessarily a violent criminal past, that maybe they didn't approach the way they would not would have in another case? Yeah, Connor, I, I, I will tell you this. Um, I ran these organizations back when I was a senior manager over at the U.S. Marshal Service. And I can tell you that none of these are routine. And, and I will also tell you that they were that uh, these units, these uh, fugitive task forces, when they show up, they're pretty heavily armed. Uh, I think in this particular case, the individual got a jump on them from mm -hmm. inside the house and fired uh, from inside the house and was able to take out uh, three officers immediately to include uh, Deputy Marshal Weeks and, and also um, the Department of Corrections individuals, Sam Palach and Alden, Elliot uh, were taken out immediately, and then there was a delay when the officers were responding, and I think a second uh, gunfire exchange occurred that took out the re that took out and wounded, uh, killed one officer and wounded uh, four others. So this was this is a heck of a gunfight here. We haven't seen this this type of uh, law enforcement um, being shot at since probably the Dallas, Texas. Uh, incident where the five officers were, were shot and killed down yeah. there. So this is pretty heavy duty. When you hear some of the descriptions, it's it's wartime descriptions right. in this particular incident. In fact, I want to play one more clip from that police chief you saw getting understandably emotional a few minutes ago, the Charlotte chief who said, who was asked about, you know, whether the officers are prepared to encounter AR-15s in a situation like this. Here's what he said. Uh, traditional body armor for police officers does not withstand a rifle round. Um, so the AR-15 is, is able to suppress uh, rapid gunfire uh, and holds the magazines of obviously holds a great deal of uh, ammunition uh, and this individual is able to uh, unload several rounds towards our officers within a matter of seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and this was a, a task force where there was collaboration between the local police, police right, right and, and the marshal service, who maybe, I don't know, yeah. would they be more prepared for a situation like that in terms of body armor and all the rest? Yeah, they absolutely are, but here, yeah. here's the situation here. I mean, these task forces are all over the country. Marshal service manages these task forces all over the place. So when law enforcement joins the task force, they bring the worst of the worst fugitive warrants to that task force, and the marshal service prioritizes these warrants and goes after them. They do a lot of training. They're very well equipped by the marshal service. They're sworn in as special deputy United States marshals, so they have the, the federal authority to go across jurisdictional lines. So these, these are very well equipped task forces in this particular case. Uh, the chief is correct. Mm -hmm. Regular body armor will not stop a high-powered rifle, but they have shields and they have other uh, devices that can protect them. But I think in this particular case, because he got the jump on got, them right. before they were ready to mount up, uh, you know, and evidence will come out here in the future to show probably exactly that's what occurred. As a final point, let me put up what we know about this particular task force. Uh, the Carolinas Regional Fugitive Task Force is, is what it's called, right? So um, yes. headquartered in Charlotte, 70 federal, state, local agencies, more than 8,900 fugitives have been apprehended, uh, we're told, since, since 2018. So this is some serious work that they've been doing for a number of years. Yes. Any lessons learned, though, from this terrible uh, tragedy? Uh, unfortunately, the Marshal Service is very experienced at uh, having line of duty deaths. I mean, this is probably one of the toughest jobs in law enforcement is to go after an individual that knows they're wanted and does not want to go back to jail. We will strip this operational plan down. We will look at it and make whatever changes are necessary. But I will tell you that uh, these are very well trained units, very uh, well equipped units. And unfortunately, we have a very sad day here, yeah. one sad day that we haven't seen in quite a while. And uh, my heart and uh, prayers from all the Marshal Service family goes out. And I will say this, that, that there is a website set up, usmarshalsfund.org, 
dot org. It's a charitable organization. They show up with within 24 to 48 hours and assist the families of the fallen with a quick stipend to help them okay. with any immediate needs they may. All right, that's good to know as well. Art Roderick ran these types of task forces when he was in the Marshal Service. So we appreciate your insight. You're right, it's a terrible event. We all certainly feel that way. Uh, from Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.